My name is David Hart. I am a historian who specializes in the history of the classical liberal tradition with a special interest in the French classical liberal tradition. And I've been working on that for the past 40 years, ever since I was an undergraduate. Well, Bastiat is a, a very interesting character because um, he, was, he was born in 1801 in a small town in uh, southwest France, uh, Bayonne. He was extremely well known in his day for being one of the great uh, economic journalists uh, of all time. He combined journalistic activities with political activities along with um, scholarly writings, which made him, made him quite unusual. Very few scholars were also activists in different ways. One thing I think that pushed or led to Bastiat's radicalism, both in terms of thinking and also his person, personal behaviour, was he went to a very innovative private school in a small town um, not too far away from where he lived, where they did not teach Greek and Latin, but taught modern languages and commerce and poetry and music. And this got, I think, Bastia thinking in, uh, in a very different way to the traditionally educated French uh, upper classes. Um, he won prizes for poetry, writing. He loved playing the cello and tra traveled. Every time he went to Paris, he took his cello with him and played it at soirees and uh, events. He was also an athlete. He won a, a, a prize for athletic achievement when he was at school. So that's the importance of uh, private education, I would say. You know, he's a young man, 15 or 16, and he's getting this quite innovative and radical education. Um, so it's not surprising that he thought differently from most of the people around him. As a person, I think he's admirable, or shows very admirable qualities in being able to continue doing extremely hard work right to the end of his life, even though he was dying from a very painful condition, which I believe was throat cancer. He was also alive at a very tumultuous period in French history. Uh, he lived through three revolutions, would you believe? Uh, he lived through the revolution or the end of the Napoleonic era, 1815, when Napoleon's protectionist regime came to an end. He lived through the 1830 revolution when the restored monarchs were overthrown and replaced in 1830 by Louis Philippe with the promise that there would be a more constitutional liberal monarchy. And then he lived through the 1848 revolution in which he took a very active role as a politician and pamphleteer and activist. And that experience with uh, revolution, having lived through that, gave him and many other French thinkers a kind of uh, piquant flavour uh, that English writers, for example, don't have. They, they, the French had to live through periods of tyranny, upheaval, revolution, counter-revolution, which made them think very seriously about how um, free societies could be established and maintained and how they could resist being uh, disrupted by revolutions and counter-revolutions. So to show that sort of moral character and strength, I think, is very interesting. But in terms of his ideas, I think he was one of the unsung heroes of the classical liberal movement because of the depth of his understanding of what liberty was, uh, the way in which he could write about liberty uh, that was easily understandable by ordinary readers, and at another level to have a sophistication of understanding of theory that even today we still don't fully appreciate. I mean, we hear the stories that, uh, for example, Ronald Reagan liked reading Frederick Bastiat. I wish he'd read Bastiat more deeply and uh, thought more, thought harder about what Bastiat was actually saying and acted on it. People read him and understand what he's saying and act on those principles. I'd like more politicians to read Bastiat and perhaps have the scales fall from their eyes and give up politics and turn to some more productive activity. I don't know really what, whether one person can change the world. I mean, Karl Marx, I guess, changed the world in so many terrible ways. My secret hope was that Bastiat might, had he lived longer and finished some of his other works, he might have become the Karl Marx of the liberal movement. But perhaps we need a Bastiat of our own day to uh, inspire us rather than keep going back to the old Bastiat. We know we should know and recognize and love him, the old Bastiat, but we need our own new Bastia to carry the fight forward for a million of them. <laughs>